So now we gotta give you a little introduction to your first example of what's called a protecting group. And specifically, the one we'll talk about is specific for alcohols. So we'll talk about protecting alcohols. Uh, now let's say we had a ketone here. Uh, and with this ketone, we wanted to do Grignard addition and add this methyl group and have this methyl group come and attack the ketone, kick the electrons up, so and form this lovely alcohol product right here. So problem is this is not going to work very well at all. So again, your Grignard reagent is a very strong nucleophile, but it's also a very strong base. Uh, and a bronsted acid base reaction is generally faster than a nucleophile electrophile reaction. So this Grignard reagent being a nucleophile looks over at this partially positive carbon and says, or something akin to that. Uh, but then it looks over at this hydrogen right here and says, oh my goodness, hubba hubba, you're not supposed to mix me with anything protic. So, and as a result, instead of getting the desired product here, all we did was deprotonate the already existing alcohol here. We'd still have a ketone. We'd end up with an alkoxide ion right here. And then your CH3 bus just bonds to another H here and becomes CH4, which in this case is a gas and bubbles out of the solution. Uh, and then when you go to add H3O plus in step two, it just simply reprotonates it and turns it right back, uh, not there, turns it right back into the original reactant. Uh, so your Grignard reagent's destroyed, converted into methane, and your original reactant gets returned back to its original state. You did not accomplish the reaction you wanted to do. So that's why you got the big red X here going through here. So if you actually want to pull this off, there's a bit more to it, and you got to do what we say, protect the alcohol first. So, and I like to think it's really more protecting the Grignard reagent from the alcohol, but that's not the way we word it. We say we're protecting the alcohol, and we protect that here with TMSCl and uh, triethylamine. We'll talk about what those look like in a little bit here. And once we protect it, we can do our reaction, and then we have to deprotect. And we're going to take a little more specific look at what that looks like, as well as what some of these reagents look like as well. So first of all, these reagents. So TMSCl here is trimethylsilyl chloride. So you got a silicon in there, that's the silyl part. So instead of uh, being carbon, uh, it's silicon in the middle there. Uh, and in this case, uh, you've also got uh, triethylamine, which is just simply nitrogen bonded to three ethyl groups. So it needs a pretty decent organic base. Uh, and that's what we're dealing with uh, in terms of the protection here. And essentially what's gonna happen here is our alcohol is going to come in and attack the silicon atom and kick off the chlorine, so a substitution reaction. And if you kind of look at what that's going to end up looking like here, so it's still bonded to the hydrogen there, the oxygen's going to have a positive formal charge, and that silicon is still bonded to three methyl groups. So instead of writing CH3s, so I'm going to get a little lazy here and write methyl groups. So. And then it's the base's job to come and pull that H off. So that's where our triethylamine comes in and deprotonates. And now we no longer have an OH. So our solution, or in this case, this molecule is not protic anymore, and I don't have a problem with it actually protonating a Grignard reagent and then destroying a Grignard reagent. The alcohol is now protected. And what's nice is I can remove this back off with either H3O plus or some fluoride ions, which we have a special way of getting in there uh, if we choose to do it that way. In our case, we're just going to use H3O plus at the end of this reaction. It'll serve a twofold purpose. Uh, but the big thing is that now I can add my Grignard reagent so, and it's free to attack my ketone because there's no alcohol for it to react with in an acid base reaction. So, that's going to get us to an alkoxide ion with the methyl group attached. One thing, by the way, we often abbreviate this as OTMS uh, in this case. And finally, we'll finish this reaction off by adding H3O plus. That H3O plus is going to accomplish two things. So one, it's going to protonate this oxygen, turning it into an OH, but also it's going to deprotect, turning that back into an alcohol as well. And so what's nice about these protecting groups is you can put them on, and when you're done with the reaction you want to do, because you can't have protic, anything protic around, then you can take them back off and deprotect. 
Now, one thing to note, instead of H3O+, some, some people will finish this third step of a Grignard reaction off with just water. And so that's great. That'll still protonate this oxygen up here, the alkoxide, to an alcohol, but it will not deprotect. So you got two options at that point. If you use water instead, you can just simply add some H3O+, afterwards, or you can add this big guy right here called TBAF, and almost everybody just calls it TBAF, but that's tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride, and it's the fluoride, that's a way of getting in the solution, it's the fluoride that actually is going to remove the protecting group and turn it back into an alcohol. So whether you want to use H3O plus or TBAF to deprotect, your choice, but you're probably responsible for both and you should probably recognize both. But if you're doing a synthesis yourself, take your pick.